What up, what up, what up? Y'all already know who it is. Urban Culture. Here to give y'all some more of that juice. Y'all already know, we just gonna start straight into it. Megan The Stallion allegedly tried to fight model Winnie Harlow over Tory Lanez's post. What in the world? Check this out. She got in a fight with Winnie Harlow at uh, Michael Rubin's party. I don't have all the de full details yet, and I'm waiting on the video, but I text Megan and Winnie, so there you go. Boom, hold on. Have a good weekend. It's time for thoughts and prayers. Now you see, Jason Lee just put it straight out the head. <laughs> it was straight to the point. 14 seconds of straight up what it is. But if you look at the caption of the post, it says, Jason Lee recently broke the news that Winnie Harlow and Meg the Stallion got into a fight at Mike Rubin's all white party. I have more details on why. I'm told, allegedly, this all started because Winnie is Canadian. She posted something about Tory Lanez on social media in the midst of Meg and Tory's shooting trial stuff, which Meg allegedly took issues with. I'm told Winnie's alleged posts, I tried to go back and find it, but I couldn't, wasn't aimed to be against Meg the Stallion at all but was perceived that way. When Winnie allegedly realized the perception of the post, she deleted it. I'm told there was also an alleged short convo about the post where Meg at some point actually reached out to Winnie and Winnie apologized. Meg allegedly left Winnie on red and did not respond to the apology. Ruben's party time comes. Meg and Winnie allegedly get into a verbal altercation I'm told Meg allegedly approached Winnie about the post, but tons of people there broke it up before an actual fight could really happen. My person who was there alleges Meg was going off and yelling at Winnie. I should beat your ass. The end. So this is like basically nothing actually happened. Is what people say. But make it too fine. You too fine to be out there fighting, girl. I just want you to know that. You don't need to be doing this. Let me take you away from this. JK. JK, Meg. You fight who you want to fight. And I'm happily married. You're still beautiful, but I'm happily married. You know what I'm saying? So don't be hitting on people. Don't be hurting people, Meg. Just go chill out. You know what I'm saying? Just chill out. <laughs> you better this. What, what Chris what, what Chris say on uh, Family Guy when he asked that girl to spit on him? He was like, I want to take you away from this. <laughs> But straight up though, that's some messy shit. I'm hoping that uh, everything was squashed. And if there was an apology given, you know, hopefully they can sweep that under the rug, get through it. But knowing how the streets is, if there's already something there and you ain't really, uh, you know what I'm saying? You ain't really made that move yet. People can feed into that energy so they can get some type of entertainment from it. But what y'all think about that? Y'all think Meg need to go ahead and just let that shit be? Because we can't even find a message of what Winnie posted, but if it was some out of line shit and it was pretty, uh, you know how some people backtrack, oh no, I didn't really mean it that way. If it was that type of shit, then we gonna have to do some talk. You know what I'm saying? Not that we can do anything about it. But here's what we can do something about. We can do something about how Diddy is breaking jail rules to sneak phone calls and influence the jury pool. At least that's what the feds claim. What? So there's a 30 page memo that was filed on Friday, November 15th in response to Diddy's latest attempt to be granted bail. There's a hearing on the matter scheduled next Friday, November 22nd. The document claims that since Diddy has been incarcerated, he has used a variety of means to evade the Bureau of Prisons monitoring his communications in violation of jail rules so that he could make calls that evade surveillance and speak to people he wasn't authorized to reach out to. God damn, this man is a mastermind. His methods, the government claims, included using a PAC, phone access code, numbers belonging to other inmates to make calls, using three-way calls to contact other individuals, including individuals who are not on his approved contact list, and using an unauthorized third-party communication system to send messages to numerous individuals, including unauthorized contacts. Part of the reason for this, the memo continues, was so that Diddy could plan a public relations strategy in order to influence the jury pool. Quotations, open quote, the defendant is explicit about his intentions to use public statements to alter the public perception. Nigga, that's crazy. 
It points in particular to a social media campaign around Diddy's birthday, citing the birthday post that he had where, you know, his daughter was singing happy birthday with him with his kids around. Basically using that post, the memo says that Diddy enlisted his family members to plan and execute at his carefully curated direction. Diddy, from within the jail, then monitored the analytics, audience engagement, all of that extra, and explicitly discussed with his family how to ensure that the video had his desired effects on potential jury members in the case. It continues. The document also makes mention of Diddy's alleged relentless efforts to contact potential witnesses, including victims of his abuse, who could provide powerful testimonies against him. The defendant goes on in his goal to blackmail victims and witnesses either into silence or providing testimony helpful to his defense. God dang. That's actually some really good planning and some really good moves making. But how do you get around it? He's the diddler. That's all right. There's going to be ways that they can find out. We're going to see exactly how this goes out. But until then, we're going to step away, talk a little bit about how Uncle Luke claims Jay-Z, Diddy, and Kanye West work with the system to make black people villains. That is a deep ass statement. Check it out. LeBron James is a villain. Why? Because he has all black representation. Kyrie Irving is a villain because he stands as a black man. The brother over there at Boston, he's a villain. Kareem J Abdul-Jabbar was a villain. The, the, the little girl, Angel Reese versus Caitlin Clark. Angel Reese is a villain. That's why people subscribe to that. You guys don't know, that's how America works. I, Luther Campbell, I am a villain. I'm a bad guy. That's why when you look at my profile, bad boy hip hop, I will never get into Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Puff Daddy was not a villain, he was one of them. Kanye West was not, was one of them. Jay-Z was one of them. Biggie Smalls, a villain. Tupac, a villain. We all are villains. And until you people realize that, as black people in America, you are the villain. You are, it's black and white. You're the opposite of white. We will always be in competition with them. Y'all don't hear me. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty dope. There's a lot going on. I don't wanna feed into the separation of a lot of things, because of course, after the election process, you already can see how divided, I mean, even before it happened, you see how divided America was, but with something like that, I do definitely understand where he's going with that. You have these people that turned out a separate way, they're villainized instantly, you know, don't do what they're doing, or uh, you wanna be seen as evil, I want you to look at these people that we put in the forefront. But being on the outside, I don't know any of the work that goes into somebody being at that stature or what type of things they had to turn down or move past in order to be grown to this light where they're kind of immune to the the perspective of are you a villain or not you know obviously kanye and jay-z aren't in the same position <laughs> one of them is going through a lot more struggles right now or at least jay-z probably just doesn't even talk about them if they are um and we all see what diddy's going through but what do y'all think about that do y'all think that we're all we are villainized or do you think that may be a victim mindset because personally i feel like you can look at a lot of cultures worldwide and they do take from a lot of black community Although in some cultures, we are just ostracized while they still take what we've created. So, yes, you could see some things like that. But will we still stand there and say that, oh, I'm a villain. They're going to always be against me. Or is shit that just be a mentality that someone takes, period, in life? If you want to be successful without having to depend on the others. I don't know. Again, I'm just I'm just throwing things out. I'm just a talking voice speaking his mind a little bit. But y'all let me know. What do y'all think about that? I would love to see what that uh what your insight or what your perspective is on it. Is Uncle Luke talking something real right now? Or is he just an old man trying to get his last words out before he no longer matters even more? Not that he doesn't matter at all. I love me some I love me some of his music. You know, like he made that song with Kanye West. Nah, I'm lying. I did that just because of the last time I made a statement. Everybody called me out, although I had the goddamn cadence right. I just didn't have the name right to the song. Y'all knew what I was talking about. Y'all knew I knew what I was talking about. Forget y'all. Anyways, let's talk about WAC 100. 
and how he further flares up J Prince feud by popping off on Willie D. Check this shit out. J Prince, you know what it was in that alley. Everybody know me, bro. When I caught you in that alley, you was humble. You whooping about what you gonna do. Nigga, you hit, we hit. You hit, we hit. Ain't nothing to say. All you gotta do is, homie, give me an inkling of an inkling that you own that. We already know where everything at. Everything. So we don't care about all that. Nigga, you got you alive, Wyatt. You hit, we hit. You better know that big you, he ain't got no more juice. Ain't nothing respecting him out here. He ain't never put in no work. Got real respectable road in 60 who then told me the stories of y'all went on missions, went to jail, and they guns empty, and your gun is still full. Mm. You don't do that. No. I ran with you for 17 years. You sat on this couch in my house right here with your head down. Asking for assistance and help. When you beat your kid damn near unconscious and DCFS took your children, the power root card helped you get them back. Boy, oh. you better leave me alone, homie. Because you ain't like that. You 57, 58 years old. You not like that. You got bad knees. They got to pull eight bottles of blood out of your knees every 10 to 15 days. Boy, you need to kick back. All y'all with your little buster parade down there. Hey, bro, y'all too old to want to deal with this. Because it ain't going to be a walk in the park. It ain't going their way for sure. Willie D, come on, bro. You got habits. You go by your little spot over there. And I don't want to mess up your relationship. And your little thing thing over there, boy, we on your bumper now. Cause you let this bozo pull you into something that ain't got nothing to do with you. Jay Prince, we shouldn't even have a problem. You should respect the fact that a man is making sure a sister's all right. You know I'm not wrong. I told the world every time you lie, I put it up there. Why y'all getting into it? Cause Wack wouldn't let him bully an old lady, old black lady. Did you lie and tell the people the footage he got to help Larry Hoover get out of jail? This ain't nothing but Larry Hoover sitting in the penitentiary telling his life story. Him telling his life story ain't going to help him get out of jail. But let me tell you what else ain't going to help him get out of jail. You sitting there talking about in the name of Larry Hoover is on. You want Larry Hoover to stay in jail so you can keep utilizing his people and fake that you trying to look out for him. He ran that play. Hey, right, but isn't Willie D is like the, the guy that's the size of a Chucky doll? Nah, that's Bushwick. No, that's no. Bushwick. And yeah, Bushwick, that's you catching the stray. Willie D run his mouth. We coming at you next. And we going to expose the other Willie D-ism. Bro, stay in your lane. I'm a fan, homie. On par root. But nigga, don't play with me, bro. I'm a wide baby. I'm a guys. wide baby. Don't play with me, bro. Don't let this little dude drag you into something that ain't got nothing to do with you, bro. God damn. So there's definitely some uh some animosity in there. <laughs> he was popping off a lot. I'ma just leave that one with y'all. Out. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that with y'all. What do y'all think? Is there, is there some validity in what he calling him out about? Is there some? I mean, definitely, of course, if it, it happened, there's definitely some validity, but does it really need to go that far? Does this work more against him being, you know, putting this up on social or showing how he, I'm not gonna necessarily say he's stepping out of his character because he's had some views with other people before, uh, but, you know, is it worth that energy? Or is it just something that we're doing just to, build a little bit more fire i know 50 cent used to start beef and i'm putting that in quotations just to help move things along it was very good marketing like what he did with uh i believe it was chameleoner he had made a comment and chameleoner wanted to talk to him about it and he was like no nah, dog you miss you missed the whole reason of it you missed the chance to start something up and then you know what i'm saying we could build from it but i don't know i'm gonna leave that to y'all 
let's uh let's go ahead shift gears over here to funk flex as he goes scorched earth on shine over his claims against diddy and the 1999 shooting check this out yo sean i see you being careful with your words too talk your, your shit because you don't want me full blast talk your shit flex your face. listen you should get a bag of money for a bag of lies i'm okay with that bro I'm gonna tell you, Sean Poe, that's what you are. You're a punk. Alright, so if you don't know, basically, there's a feud between Flex and Shine, and it's escalating right now. Essentially, Flex shared a video of Shine's recent TMZ interview, where Shine accused Flex of speaking negatively about icons like Jay Z and Tupac Shakur. Shine cited these names to downplay Flex's recent mentions of him. In response, Flex teased his 7 p.m. Hot 97 show, promising to address the remarks. And he delivered. He said, Sharon, I see you being careful with your words, too. You're tippy-toeing because you don't want me to full blast on your face. Pause. Later, he stood on his claim that Sean fabricated elements of his documentaries. The Honorable Sean. He said, you should get a bag of money for a bag of lies. I'm okay with that. So prior to this, about a month ago, Flex accused Shine of lying in his Hulu film, particularly regarding the 1999 uh, nightclub shooting that resulted in Shine's nearly nine year prison sentence. Now, he's long maintained that he was the scapegoat in the crime, alleging that Diddy was the real trigger man. Natanya Rubin, who was shot in the face during the incident, also pointed the fingers at Diddy. Despite this, Shine claims he was forced to take the fall. There's a lot of there's a lot of tea behind it, but as you know, already it's amplified. Granted, we don't know where it's gonna go because I think Shine has already turned a new leaf as it is in life, so he's probably not really gonna be pushing too much information or at least uh, speaking too much towards the situation, letting it throw him off. But what do y'all think? Y'all think y'all think Shine out here lying out? People just trying to get some. Uh, People, everybody trying to get some publicity, some of that notoriety money, you know what I'm saying? Look at me real quick so I can be trending and give me some extra bread. Be relevant in a sea full of other irrelevant niggas. I don't, you know, I don't know. It just seemed like there's a whole bicoastal of irrelevance happening. But at least it could be entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Scrape the fuck up. But let's go ahead and do a backflip shift gears to boost that badass saying he's willing to fight anyone for 20 million. Check this shit out. Hey, check this out. They done fucked over my role model last night, my churn, making fun of me. Everybody talking shit. That man 58 years old. And went and got 20 M's. 58 years old. And went and got 20 M's. I'm proud of him. Give me 20 million right now. Anybody give me 20 million right now, I'm jumping in the ring with Javante. Tank got to knock me out. Call, call Bud. Call Bud. What my other nephew name? Shakur. Call everybody and tell them 20 million. Fight on Netflix with Boosie. Yeah, we, we, hey, we, we going to break the numbers. I'm going to throw more than Tyson throw, I bet you that. Nigga might put me up, but hey. 20 me, I need that 20 M. Shit, I'ma throw them bitches. I'm calling out Tank. Oh, this is way too tasty. <laughs> All the niggas, oh, uh, what the other niggas? Shakur, Bud, 20 M's, Netflix flight. Boosted badass, nigga. Let's do the stand off. <laughs> I'm hustling, nigga. <laughs> I know y'all seen that nigga stand off. Y'all seen a grimace on that nigga face? A hundred percent. With 20 million, there's not a lot of niggas I wouldn't punch. You know what I'm saying? I punched the shit out of 20 million? Bruh, we gonna, I'm fighting something. I'll fight a wild animal as long as I'm gonna live. 20 million, you, hey, look, you cover up, put a muzzle on a bear. 
and put some leaves on, you know what I'm saying? Put some put some gloves on that motherfucker. I'll fight me a bear. Now, granted, I know some of them swings he got break some bones, but I'm a heal past it. You know what I'm saying? As long as I don't get no head trauma. Uh, but yeah, for 20 million, that's, that's not really a lot of people I wouldn't fight. Uh, now, the winning portion might not be too... Uh, might not be too common, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just tall, I, I really ain't got the, the hands to back up a lot of the things I say. Uh, but I think everybody does have a uh, understood uh, berserker mode, which kind of gets you past <laughs> gets you past any fight and gives you at least the confidence that you can survive any fight, so who knows? Uh, with that being said, would you, I, who would you fight for 20 million? Matter of fact, if you had, a, if you had to create a fight, you gotta choose a roster. Any person that you're willing to fight that you know you gonna lose, but you still gotta fight them. Who would you who would you fight for 20 million? I need to know right now, dead or alive, 20 million dollars. But let's still we're gonna stay on the topic of Boosie and just we're gonna approach from another angle here, real quick. Pause. Let's shift gears to how he's expecting a daughter with his fiance. It's gonna be girl number nine, and she is on the way right now. Check this out, Rancho. <laughs> Yeah. 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 What is it? I don't know what's going on. Watch your face. Ooh, congratulations, but nine, god damn. I'm proud of you, man. Congratulations, Mr. Abuse Bayadas, for the child that you got on the way. I know he happy. I know he happy. I'm always happy. When both my kids came about the consummation of their existence. Phenomenal times. But let's shift gears one more time here as we talk about how Soldier Boy goes off on broke ass plies for suing him. <laughs> Check this out. They talk about some man, you know plies on you. Plies. If you don't sit your broke down, what the fuck wrong with your cheap? Pretty boy swag is not your beat. So you want to wait ten years to try to sue a nigga for a beat? That is not your beat, crazy man. What the fuck is wrong with you, plies? Need to change your name to lies, cause you a motherfucking lie. You know that ain't your motherfucking beat, bro. What the fuck wrong with you? You should have just said, hey, bro, I'm broke. Let me hold something. Plies, you don't sit your bald headed down some. Your motherfucking hairline in the middle of your head. Fuck out of here. That beat is all original music. You only can sue somebody if they sample your song and don't get it clear. That is not a sample, bro. Just sit your bro down some. The f wrong with you? You know how much blood, sweat, and tears I put into Pretty Boy Swag? Nigga? You trying to come and claim my nigga? shit don't sound nothing alike. Nigga? Fuck around with you? That is not a sample. It's all of your shit go do 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 do. My shit go do 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 do. Pretty boy, that don't sound nothing alike, man. Sit your crap down somewhere, bro. Stop. I'm mad cause I'm up. See me perform at the BET Awards, that was the last straw. Woke up to the next day to a lawsuit. Cheap, just stop reaching. Go live right now and show me a mansion. Show me a mansion, show me some foreign whips. Show me, show me a million cash. And I'ma get off your ass. Till then, you broke. Don't you pop? That's some poly. You try to sue a I thought you was a gangster. I thought you was a goon. Ain't you the nigga that used to wear a goon chain with a ski mask on it? I thought you was a real gangster, real goon. You could have came and got that shit back in blood. You gonna go snitch to the white man. He stole my beat. Police, you a snitch. God damn. Wasted impeccably no time <laughs> to deal with that shit. Uh, Soldier Boy is hilarious. I, I think he's he's funny. Uh, <laughs> but he he's speaking from the heart like it went it went from you broke 
it ain't your beat to I'ma tell you how you broke. <laughs> he said, go live and show me a mansion. That's a, <laughs> that as a request, just to prove your lack of brokenness. Dog, I would just accept a broke. I ain't gonna lie to you. Cause a nigga like me be broke all the time. That's why I'm doing this YouTube shit. Nah, I'm playing. But what do y'all think? Do y'all think it's even, <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie, it's entertaining. So I'm always there for that. But is a lot of this, a lot of this even necessary as an issue? Should it even be addressed? I mean, besides the legal matters, of course, you ain't gonna sit there and just let a nigga take your money. But should it even be addressed as an issue? I don't know. I'll leave that to y'all. But as always, I appreciate y'all for stopping through. Thank you so much for your time, your attention. You know, if you haven't already, please leave a like, subscribe, comment, share it. Let me know what you think about the video. Leave your opinions about how things are going. And y'all continue to join y'all mother life. Urban culture. Saying thank you. Peace.